Good evening and welcome to Sporlitics, where sports and politics mix and mingle. I'm Stacey Johnson. Joining me tonight is Aguna, the Nigerian moderate Republican, Stephen, the independent thinker, Keith, the constitutional conservative, and my cousin Todd. We've got a full show for you tonight. <laughs> I saw Guna laughing. President Biden pardons all federal offenses of simple marijuana possession and his first major step toward decriminalization of the herb. Some people say herb. NASCAR with Stephen as he discusses the organization's investigation of a driver from late race shenanigans helped knock the defending champ out of the playoffs. Current White House press secretary shares her significant story for National Coming Out Day. National Coming Out Day is October 11th. It's established to honor LGBTQ people stepping fully into their true selves to others, also known as coming out of the closet. It's a day for honoring the act and all the related hopes, fears, dreams, and expectations for the future. The January 6th committee hearing is set for this Thursday, October 13th, although they didn't say what they would be doing or who they would be hearing from. 2022 Major League Baseball playoffs are predictions from the wild card games through the World Series. The Philadelphia Phillies beat the Atlanta Braves today as four MLB playoff games took place. The November elections are 27 days, 656 hours away, as Herschel Walker, whose son said, Herschel paid a former girlfriend to get an abortion as he and the GOP continue to raise a ton of money and receive support, full support from the grand old party prior to his debate with Senator Warnock. Draymond Green. Draymond Green, the Golden State Warriors. What's next for him? A Los Angeles Council president takes leave amid calls for her resignation over racist remarks. The three council members on the council have not stepped aside in LA, even though they have been asked to do so, according to Politico.com. G7 leaders meet on Ukraine issues. NFL week five. We're going to talk about those eagles. <laughs> um, according to Punchbowl News, Senator Tommy Tuberville, Republican from Atlanta, and Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, Republican Congresswoman from Georgia, made racist remarks during rallies held by former President Donald Trump over this past weekend. Greene also recently compared Biden to Adolf Hitler, a remark for which some Democrats want her to be censured. Trump, of course, previously made his own racist remarks about former Transportation Secretary Lane Chow. What's going on with American professional athletes? Draymond Green, Devontae Adams, Cincinnati versus Baltimore, and the Eagles, again, we'll talk about it, and our Sunday night football upcoming big game against Dallas Cowgirls. We'll break down what we see. And I'm sure Aguna will let you know. Shanghai and other big Chinese cities, including Shenzhen, have ramped up testing for COVID as infections rise with some local authorities hastily closing schools, entertainment venues, and tourist spots. And AstraZeneca's COVID vaccine suffers a setback in nasal spray trial. You know, they're trying to have a nasal spray 
that will work as a vaccine for COVID. Oil and OPEC, they cut down the amount of barrels they're producing, which means our prices at the pump will go up. This is going to widen the rift between President Biden and Saudi royals. And this is the last week. I don't know if you knew it, but it's the last week of the National Hispanic Heritage Month, which ends October 15th. According to HispanicHeritageMonth.gov, each year, Americans observe National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th by celebrating the histories, the cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and South America. That and more, I don't know how we can fit it in. First up, NASCAR with Stephen. Stephen, I don't know if you can hear me. What was going on with the shenanigans and that play that that team made that caused the person to get out of the playoffs? Who was it that had to get out of the playoffs? Was it Chase Elliott? Um, no, Chase Elliott is leading in the playoffs. He's 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 a phenomenal. He's probably going to win the playoffs. It what you're talking about would be um, Kyle Larson, who is out of the playoffs now, and maybe he got shafted. Maybe it's just racing. It doesn't it doesn't matter. But uh, Kyle Larson is 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 the uh, winner, uh, the champion from last year. But this year it's Elliott. And Elliott, if Elliott doesn't win. I would be really surprised. I would eat uh, the uh, a hat uh, of uh, Nas, whatever hat he has from Atlanta. Would I'd eat his hat if if Chase Elliott doesn't win? But that doesn't do me any good. Why don't you I've eat Ross uh, Chastain, Chastain well, the whole know. year? I've loved him. He's in third place now behind Logano, and then then in fourth place is Ryan. Then you have Byron, Denny, and then Briscoe, who's really. Funky. He's a he's a he's a long shot Briscoe, but watch out for him. If he ends up winning uh, the championship this year, it's going to put NASCAR on its head. But he definitely could do it. He's a really scrappy driver, just like Ross Chastain. I like him a lot. I didn't think he would make it to the final eight, but he is the eighth of the, everybody else. But he's still in it, and it and it looks like it's going to be good. They're going to Las Vegas. Um, and unfortunately for Kyle Larson, it's um, his best track. So if he hadn't gotten screwed over, then he he would have been well on his way to probably winning an, a, another championship, maybe. But this this year, it's Elliott. He's a he. Everybody loves Elliott. His father was Bill Elliott, and his his father was the 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 uh, most. He was the everybody loved him. He was the, he was the most popular driver, just like uh, Chase Elliott. They're both the most popular driver. And if Elliott wins, it's good for NASCAR. There's four more races left. And uh, it's, it's, it's basically tracks that are really easy for Elliott, like Las Vegas, Homestead, Martinsville, Phoenix. He should get top tens in every one of those. He shouldn't lose any ground. And he should win the championship. So that's so, probably uh, how it's going to end up. If anything else happens, if, something, if he has a couple of bad races – uh, something happened to him. Like I had this past race was a road course. You know how much I love a road course. Ross Chastain and Daniel Suarez, who's from Mexico, they are the best road course drivers. They finished last, almost, almost last and next to last. And they had car trouble. So you never know what's going to happen. But on paper right now, Elliot is like the Patriots from different years where they were going to win every game and probably win the Super Bowl too. So everybody's looking at Elliott to win. I'm still pulling for Ross Chastain, who's in third, and I need him to win it all. Mm -hmm. so, okay, so if you look two, at my screen. What were those two Mexicans' names again? No, it was Daniel Suez. He's the only the Mexican in here, and he's really oh. good at road courses because that's how he came up racing. He raced on road courses. Oh, so okay. he's very good at road courses. And Ross Chastain, he's, he's an American – but he's very good as well. Well, is America. the Mexican so, an illegal? No, he's not illegal. He came to this country the right way. 
Oh. And that's why that's why we respect uh, him. Stop he, it. he didn't he didn't come in here illegally. So oh, who drives the okay. Eminem car, Stephen? Who drives the car with the Eminem on it? Uh, Kyle Bush, have... the 18, and he's one of my favorite drivers. Yeah, and he's so not doing you, so well. He's had a consider... really hard time, and he's switching teams next year, which is unbelievable. He was with Joe Gibbs. I have a question. Who was the coach of the Redskins. I have a question. Isn't that what Keith next... does? Huh? I have a question. Like, Keith always comes in. I have a question. Um, okay. Would you consider him an anchor baby? I don't know. I don't know what the situation is. You know what it is? Oh. He's, a, he's oh. a great NASCAR driver that was given a chance by NASCAR, and he's made the most of it. And he's one of the top premium drivers, no matter where he came from or what he does. I don't know. I don't know the situation. But I, I, okay, um, so let me let me. You guys are holding me up. I want you to see like, this. So it says time. NASCAR is in, so it says NASCAR is investigating a driver for late race shenanigans that helped knock the defending champ out of the playoffs. That's what I was talking about, Stephen. Um, right. So they were talking about, as you see, this was written by Court Gaines, October tenth, twenty twenty two, at Insider dot com, and it said. Um, Chase Briscoe Stewart has racing pulled off a dramatic move to avoid elimination from the playoffs and knock out defending champion Kyle Larson. Now NASCAR wants to know if he got a little too much help from a teammate. What is your response to that? You cannot expect anything less from teammates in racing until they take away the teammate situation. You're always going to have that. So it, it, does, it doesn't matter. So Like I said earlier, Chase Briscoe, watch him. He is a, he's a phenom. He's way above his skis right now. He's very good, and he, he could win the championship. And, but he's in last place. He's in eighth place as far as winning the championship, as far as his points. But he really could win. If he has four good races, he could win. And he did what he had to do. And if he took out Larson, that's what you have to do. It's just like anything in sports. You, you have to fight. You have to take out the competition any way you can. And that's what they do. It's not against the rules. What he did was it, went, it was directly with the rules. So you can't you, – they, they're not going to do anything to him because this is what should have – this is what could happen. This is what should happen. And he did the right thing. But I like Larson. I, I wish he could go back to back. But he's out. He has no chance to okay. win this year. All right. Well, thank you. I want to talk about the NBA, and I want to talk about specifically the um, Draymond Green. Uh, I don't know if anyone saw it. Anyone see yeah. the? I know you saw it, Aguna. I saw yeah, it. I Did saw, you see that? I saw the clip. Yeah, so, I saw. So what? Oh, even even Keith saw it. So that means the yeah, only person yeah, who like, probably I didn't was, see it. He, the He's only like person me. who probably did not see it is Cousin Todd. He doesn't need to see it. He lives Todd was, Todd was hiding his eyes, so he couldn't see it. So, he Todd, like do you even know what we're talking about? Todd, do you even know what we're talking about? Yes, yes, yes. You're talking about Stephen and Keith. I think they had a big love spat. Huh? Oh. Yes. Well. Never mind. He's he's I, all good. right. You know so, what? Just uh, forget I said anything. So 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 forget that. I, I want to talk about Draymond Green, and I want to talk about these athletes and how these athletes are just losing their minds. Had they been regular people, they someone would have called the cops, and they'd have to be defending their actions in a court of law. Um, Aguna, Draymond Green was on the court. I don't think we can play the clip without getting, you know, clocked. Uh, he was on the court. Everybody he talked it, some smack. Talk. He talked some smack back and forth to, uh, is it Justin Poole? Yeah. A little and guy. then he starts walking towards him. You know, when somebody starts walking towards you, it's probably not going to be good. And here comes their head coach walking towards both of them 
He gets in Poole's face. Poole pushes him. And then Draymond Green just clocks him and knocks him to the floor. Aguna. Wait a minute. Why wait, isn't wait, Draymond wait, wait, Green? Wait, wait. What is the big deal about that? I never hear that about hockey. They knock each other unconscious all the time. <laughs> it, was, it, was, yeah. it was a practice. Well, well it wasn't it was part of the team. game, Todd. Oh, it was like the in the team. stands. <laughs> yeah, this is what they happens were, at This hockey. was during practice, Cousin Todd. Was, okay, we're going into semantics now. They fight and break each other's semantics. teeth out at it's, hockey. So what is the big semantics. deal? And now all of a sudden, Stacey wants it's to police insane. carting them out and whatnot. It was Go like, ahead, it was like if, I, if I punch you. Yeah, I mean, balls. I think, you know, if they, now they, are they teammates? I, I didn't, I didn't think, well, yes, I they're they teammates, teammates yeah. and it was during practice. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw it, but I didn't know. I saw it. I saw it was in a stadium or whatever, but I knew that the season wasn't started yet. So I assume, yeah, okay. Makes sense if it's with, during practice. I mean, during practice. teammates, teammates fight. You know, I think, though, now and now in today's age, it's not like when we were in high school and we we're just fighting on the, you know, on the football field, on the soccer field, on the basketball court. We get into arguments, we get into altercations. Things are very highly, for a new I don't device. want to even say politicized. They're, they're more like, you know, there's a, a high visibility of a lot of these incidents, right? Everybody has a phone. If you have a phone nowadays, it's a mm -hmm. gateway to the world. So you just had to police yourself. You know, everyone's looking for that clip, that world star. Are you crazy? But Are you crazy? You just have to police yourself. Are you crazy? You got to no, police yourself. I mean, self-control would have helped Draymond Green not do that, right? I mean, oh, there is some accountability with what you're trying to do. And I what mean, is Stacy trying to blow this into World what War III for? Well, yeah, what am I trying right? to blow? They got yeah. Todd, 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 They're probably going to get fined. Todd, They're probably going to get suspended. Todd, for us. if you knew anything about sportsmanship, Mm -hmm. It may happen, but the point is, like Aguna said, now everyone has a video, and now the world has seen it. And since the world has seen it, so it makes him look unsportsmanlike, and he needs to be punished. But for I mean, doing. that's part of his mo and brand too. You don't want to mess with Draymond Green. He just, you know, he's one of those guys that'll punch you in the mouth if you don't like if you don't like you. Uh, but right, but, but, I mean, I'm not saying everybody, that you're right. But I mean, to do it, it would be, if anybody was going to do it, it would have been Draymond. That's his personality, Todd. Yeah. He's not going to take any crap or punch in the face. So what happened was he got in the man's face, and then he got pushed, and then he didn't push back. He punch, He did a Superman punch where he flew through the air and pushed him right in his face. I mean, it was brutal. It was really brutal. And yeah, I mean, teammate, I, I've always said, I told, I told my son, I don't take it. I don't do it. If comes at you, you defend yourself. Now, I will say this. He came at him, you know, because – you know, the guy pushed him away from him, and he just came back. Yeah, he him. pushed him away, oh. but he didn't hit him. He yeah. pushed him away. That punch was brutal. Was and threat. that's supposed to be your teammate. That's supposed to be your friend. Yeah. I got so you. this is for this is for educational purposes. So yeah. let's see if Anger I can play management. this by TMZ, if they'll let me play this, or they'll sucker punch us in the face for <laughs> playing this. They won't a sucker punch, really. So now just look at it. Keep looking at the screen. Let me see if I can make it bigger. <coughs> Bless you. There we go. And you'll see the, you'll see. Keep watching there. You see him walking. You'll see the coach come right on over. See the coach, see the coach and the, see the coach. Yes. There you go. There you Woo. go. Woo. Outrageous. Yeah, that was kind of messed Out. up. Yeah, I mean, I saw this clip before, but, you know, I didn't see from the beginning. He's like, get off me. Oh. Yeah. Out. That's a Rageous. That's uncalled for. You can't yeah. hit nobody like that, man. That's that's. Well, I mean, yeah. He, he he doesn't even I don't care what that's he was saying. That's not even. Not that's street. not even. Uh, what they do in the street? I like to see him hit LeBron like that. <laughs> It, it didn't matter who you know, I hit. I mean, you hit somebody like that, you're not even showing any constraint right at that point. You're not, you're right. right. That's, well, you're you know, this, right is, this is what I mean. He's bringing something off the court into the court. What would make him so angry that he would do that to someone? And what type of future does he have with the uh, Golden State uh, Warriors doing that? I mean, it sounds like to me, know. he'd be I, out I, of there. Yeah, Nas, let, me hear, let me hear what Nas has to say. I'm not gonna. I'm, to go yeah, we're talking about million. Okay, we're talking about million dollar contracts, man. This is gonna be interesting. 
But I think at a minimum, right. he's yeah, probably going to be suspended okay. for a while. Go ahead, yeah, Nas. Right it was nasty. That was nasty. Nas. No, nah, they were talking. I was waiting on them to finish. They, they got it. But no, uh, you asked what would make somebody that mad. Well, about $100 million. Uh, Jordan Woo! Poole is a player on the rise who's going to be signing a really big contract. And Draymond is the elder statesman, basically, of the Golden State Warriors. This is why, in his apology, he said, kind of, I failed as a man. I failed as a teammate. Uh, you know, this is one of the young guys who I saw, basically, as a team come in here and helped in his development and everything else. So you can't be somebody's like big brother figure and mentor, and mentor, and be right. punching them down like that. Right, right, right. So Draymond was dead wrong for for what he did. And the other part of this is, and this is something like within NBA circles, bigs versus littles. Like you don't fight bigs, don't fight littles. If you're a power forward or a center, you don't fight a point guard. Draymond's about six nine, two sixty. Jordan Poole's about six two. 170 at best, you know, so really little guy, which is why he flew the way he did when he got punched. So Draymond was there wrong for this, but there's so many other interesting parts about the story. For one, if you're a Golden State uh, Warriors regular employee making a regular man's salary and you get this lotto ticket to sell to TMZ, <laughs> do you do it? <laughs> Clearly, this employee said, man, the hell with that. I'm selling the tape. So dude sold the tape. I don't know who that is. They're trying to figure it out. Of course, they're going to fire him. I guess he don't care because he obviously made his money. And that's why we actually got to see footage of it, which made it worse because Jordan Poole, of course, is a little embarrassed about it. Next I would be too. Out. That's horrible. Next day, hold, hold on, Stacey. Next day, he goes out and shows why he's possibly going to get this $100 million. And then the other part, and this is the unsaid that people ain't really saying, Draymond is a little older. He's starting to decline. His value is mostly intangibles. Is Golden State really going to invest in Draymond Green for the back half of his career while they got some of these young guys who they'd rather be signed? And is there a little bit of tension there when you know how somebody can only see you one way? So right. You see somebody as right. a little young flunky, but now you kind of have to look at him as an integral part to the team right possibly a future superstar right there he's trying to put him back in his disrespect. place yeah see and then that and that's the part where it's like damn dre you, you really messed up here and then there were some comments from other nba players where somebody openly said uh shout out to the boy uh uh, uh brandon from milwaukee uh for brandon jennings from a point guard he said when we were in, I think it was Vegas, he said, when Tristan Thompson slapped Draymond in the face, he didn't do nothing. Well, that's another big guy, similar to Draymond's size, weight, and everything else. He claims Draymond didn't do anything. But for this little guard, he wants all the smoke and is going to punch him in the face the way he did. So the Warriors are going to suspend him, possibly fine him, because it's going to be handled internally, I'm guessing, uh, as far as the NBA. And just, just because this story is the Twilight Zone, the head coach who ran over to break everything up, Steve Kerr, who was famously punched in the face in practice by Michael Jordan. So this, this story is hilarious. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But, That's why he went over there. Oh, That's why he went over there, because he knew he what knew. was going to happen. He heard all that smack talking, and he said he had a flashback. Of Jordan yeah, coming. but he didn't get in the way either. It ain't like he jumped in the no, way. No, he stood back. He's, yeah, he's not there. stupid. He's not stupid. He's like, what's going on, on over here? He knew what, what he knew what happened to him. That's why he got no, over there. The but way. the point is, you know, He's smart. But Stacey, this is going to be handled internally. Draymond will probably finish the season there and possibly go somewhere else next year. But who's but going to pick him up? And for what amount of money? Nobody wants to pick that up. I wouldn't want to pick that up. He's a, he still has talent. He still has talent. Draymond's going to go to the Hall of Fame now. Let's not act like he can't play basketball. Right. Uh, he's a really good player. Yeah, but you tarnish your you tarnish your talent with your temperament. Oh, I'm like standing on the shoulders of tarnish Charles Oakley. talent with your Charles temperament. Oakley, all the trash that was good. and the big men and the guys yeah, really. that punch you in the face and get kicked out the the garden. They're all talking. They heard they heard and seen words. It's like it's like Things get tough. Some, some, some people want him for that. Well, that's yeah, he's still looking crazy. Since, since Nas is talking, let him continue crying about how his Braves lost to the Phillies. Oh, yeah. Ah, here we go. 
Yeah, I, look, I, I don't know what to yeah, say, man. I, my man, Maxie, I, I don't know if he was drinking. Uh, my man couldn't find a strike zone. This was a terrible, terrible game by the Braves. <laughs> they rallied to make it close where they almost came back. But, yeah, this was embarrassing, man. At home. And uh, middle finger to MLB for making the defending champions play their first home game at a on a Tuesday afternoon at 1 p.m. instead of prime time. As Todd would say, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, Aguna. Aguna, what that. are you showing us in about. the video? <laughs> Hey, this is the, hey, this is the he, Philly he fanatic. Finish the fight. I know Nas is on the phone, but this is you can eat the Philly fanatic hat here. But right now we <laughs> took game one, and hey, and at the end of the day, we only needed one game in Atlanta, right? And then we just finished it at home. But let's see, that's a lot of pressure for game two. I do think um the Braves are going to come out, and they're not going to get like I don't think they're going to lose two games in a row at home. That I think that's kind of you know a stretch. But the Phillies. You know, they got around a late rally. But Harper, I mean, look, it's going to be a good day in Philadelphia. It looks like October belongs to Philadelphia with the Flyers. Um, well, I don't know about the Flyers. The Phillies, the Eagles. Right. You don't the know Union, a lot about sports. The Philadelphia Union are the number one seed in the MLS. So, you know, it's going to be October. MLS. I'm yes. it right now. Yes, Cousin October Todd. Is what is the MLS? Of Philadelphia. October yes, is Cousin Philadelphia. Todd. What is the MLS? He doesn't even know. Uh, would you nobody please. knows it comes on ESPN at four in the morning. Ain't nobody watching that. MLS. Like, well, that's what the that? championship. MLS. Wasn't that the last? No, actually, the Braves were. But before the Braves, Atlanta United was the last championship the city of Atlanta had seen in a while. So I think you better respect the game. Respect that game, Nas. What were you saying, cousin Todd? Oh, I was going to do. I'm going to answer your question. Yes, yes, a, yes, okay. yes, yes. MLS stands for. Milk less Stacy. Now, I want to. Oh, also... oh my goodness! My love so for Stephen. I thought you were going to say my love for Stephen. Oh, that yeah. was even better. Yeah, but I or would my have love to for say Stacy, your cousin. You love your cousin. Or I was going to say, uh, I love it's... everybody. <laughs> I love... Thank, thank you, thank you Aguna. I know you do, Aguna. I do. Okay, are we I'm still into sports? Bother you, cousin Todd. It's, oh, I, it's amateur level soccer that the rest of the world that loves soccer don't care about. That's what it is. Bottom yeah, of the barrel soccer. In sport because yeah, we haven't you, talked about the NFL the sport yet. And put Atlanta on the map. That sport put Atlanta we on the map. We haven't talked about the on? NFL yet, uh, Todd. We're still in sports. Yeah, I'm waiting to comment on sports. So go on. You All right, NFL, NFL. We'll start. We'll start with. No, let's start with, since we're going to continue this process to start with losers, oh, go ahead, Nas, nice. tell us about um, the Falcons. <laughs> oh, beautiful job by the Falcons. Shout out to that ref that called that penalty on a clear, plain sack on Tom Brady. Wow. Uh, again, I need the Falcons to lose. We need a draft pick. We're trying to get a quarterback. So, unfortunately, this team keeps trying to steal wins, and I don't like it. But, yeah, great game. We lost. Great call, Jerome Boger. Uh, yeah, protect Tom Brady if you got to. I don't care. Just make sure the Falcons lose. Good job. Thank you. Now we're going to the next um, team, the Washington Commander, Stephen. Well, our coach, Riviera, he threw uh, Carson Wentz under the bus. They said, what's wrong with your with your team compared to everybody else in your little, you know, the Cowboys and the it's Giants nice. and the Eagles? What's wrong with your team? He said, the quarterback. That's what's wrong. That's what Rivera <laughs> said. Rivera needs to be fired. He's a piece of garbage. You don't need him. You know why he was a good coach in, in Carolina? Because he had CMC, the best running back ever at the time. That's why he had the, the – the, uh, I don't know, Commodores, Commodores, whatever you call them. They're, 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 they're the Commodores until they can win a game. So that's why this coach needs to go. Everybody loved him because he was sick and was like, oh, we feel sorry for him, so we'll oh, keep man, him around. But why are we keeping him around? He's a horrible coach. And he threw the the, the, the uh, uh, quarterback under the bus. Well, so we, we don't I need him anymore. We don't want him anymore. Oh my God. The team would be better without him. And we had a we had uh, our running back that we drafted in a high draft last this year. He was in a uh, um, he he got shot 
when somebody was trying to rob him, take his car, and and he came back for the first time this week. He didn't do too much, but it was really good for the team. The team has a, a lot of – we have a lot of great players, or they have a lot of great players. I'm still trying to get cool with the Commodores or the com- – You can't uh, give them up. Commanders. But they, they're killing me because they've won one game, and in Carolina – uh, uh, fired their coach. We're waiting for them to fire our coach. Riviera, he's too – I'm not an ageist, but he's too old. We need one oh of these gosh. hot shot coaches. Like everybody else has, this. That's under 45 years old that is uh, that's the analytics and knows what's going on, and they can get with the game and make better decisions than Rivera. He is – he doesn't have what it takes. That he's got to okay. go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And you don't think there's some validity to what he said about Carson Wentz? You're gonna blame the coach? Yeah, I mean no, I know there's I know I know there's validity, but you don't do that to a man. You don't do what? that to him. You say there's things we need to change about the team, there's things we need to make better, but you don't individually call people out on the team. It's 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 Bush. Well, Todd, call, Todd calls you out all the time. What do you say? Well, Todd you calls say? you out all the time, uh, Stephen. You're on the team, and Todd calls you out all the time. But let's look yeah, at this. Ain't, ain't have to embarrass Carson like that. But what is it about Carson Wentz that everybody who gets him hates his guts and eventually wants to get rid of him? So I'm, well, I'm showing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm showing. Wait, 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 I'm showing a um, page where it says ESPN.com, the Carolina Panthers fire coach Matt Rule after a one and four start. Uh, people's jobs aren't necessarily um, guaranteed. But, you know, when Stephen had said to me, and then you can go, Aguna, after I say this, when Stephen said to all of us, you know, don't throw him under the bo- boat. Why do we have to have a coach so long we don't like? We had Big Red forever. No, and he wasn't winning nothing. We went to the Super Bowl one time, but they kept him forever. People, you have no choice. The owners decide how long you have a coach, regardless well, of whether or not the coach is doing Andy good. Instead of the worm killing Donovan McNabb, that's interesting, Philly. Go, go ahead, Gruna. Okay, so real quick, I know Nas in Atlanta. I don't think there's anything saving them, but for the Commanders over here, I mean, Wentz made some a really bad judgment call inside the five yard line game on the line. He just threw an interception. It could have been a touchdown. It could have been a go ahead touchdown. They could have actually won the game. So, you know, coach Riviera, he's not a, he's not an offensive guy. He's a defensive guy. Right. And he's not and the thing that why he struggled so much, because he had Cam Newton, uh, he lucked up and got Cam Newton and rode him, you know, throughout his career. Uh, he only really funny thing about it in Carolina, he only had two winning seasons in Carolina, and one of them happened to be the one that he went to the Super Bowl 15 and one. So that's his reputation, just like similar to Jeff Fisher. You know, Jeff Fisher had some great seasons at in Tennessee, never got to the big game, never won anything. And, well, he got to the big game one time, but never won anything. So, yeah, I mean, I do I think Rivera is a good coach. I, yeah, I mean, again, it made me time to change it, but he was coming in on his reputation as far as Matt Rue. You know, this is one of those things where you got these college coaches getting paid big time money to come in here. And if you I don't know if you guys remember, but when they when Carolina brought in Matt Rude, they were like they gave him one of the highest contracts for a head coach ever. Sight unseen. Similar to like Chip Kelly, where they're like, OK, you're coming in here and you're supposed to change the culture. He gets that 40. And so here's well, here's the thing. Right. So he's getting paid more than some of these coaches that have actually won division titles, have actually gone to the playoffs, have actually gone to Super Bowls. He's coming in there sight unseen, getting paid this big – culturally, the NFL was going to reject him. He has to lead men. You can't lead – the same same thing that happened to Chip Kelly. Even though Chip Kelly came in there with some innovative solutions that the league actually embraced, you know, they rejected him and they took his playbook and they applied it to other places and people got successful off of it. So Matt Rue, again, he was was in a pretty much a – you know – he was in a bad situation. Um, so now if we could talk about my Philadelphia Eagles for a second and some of the things that they're going to do and some of the things that, you know, the position they put themselves in. And it was an ugly win, but it was a win. The kicker missed the field goal, but we should have never been in that position. But I always recall, you know, 
when we had those successful seasons, there were always moments in which we won games that really shouldn't have really happened, right? Westbrook taking a punt to the house, d taking a punt to the house. You got, you know, uh, shaky Jakey hitting a 60-yard field goal against the Giants. That was one of those moments where you're like, dang, we may be a team of destiny here. The kicker missed, right? We walk off the field in Arizona, you know, where Brian Dawkins played his last game at the, you know, in, in the Arizona. You know, so it was a lot of – erasing a lot of demons this year, you know, going up against former coaches, former players. You know, so it seems like Philadelphia's on a good track. You know, it's going to be a test this weekend. But we really should not if, – if it if the NFL is real, okay, and there's not any shenanigans going on, there's no way a backup quarterback should come into Philadelphia and win, you know, throwing 100 – he only threw 100 – for 100 yards against the Rams. Now, granted, the Cowboys are on a roll. We got the defense going. You got things going on. But they really haven't played anybody or anybody that's, you know, was on the up and up. The Rams, again – you know, they were a mercenary team. So a year well, after the Super Bowl, you're looking at a decline. The Cincinnati who, who have the Eagles who have the Eagles played? Who have the Eagles played? Okay, so we played Jacksonville, right? Jacksonville, you know, they have a losing record now, but at the time they were two and one. We played the Washington Commanders. At the time they were undefeated or whatever. I don't know what they were, but at the end of the day not just who we played is how we've also won. I mean, we've dominated these teams and we've not made mistakes. You've seen the Cowboys, the Cowboys have played some really crappy teams and, you know, they had, they just done just enough not to lose. They haven't really gone out there as an offense. I'm talking about an offense going out there and really punching somebody in the mouth and beating them. I don't think Cooper rush again, any given Sunday, I get it. You know, the Eagles offensive line has some, you know, has is nicked up a little bit. So there's some opportunity there. But the corners for the Cowboys cannot cover the re- Eagles receivers. We have one of the best that. receiving corners in the league. We got one of the best I running games. I think, I think you're right. They struggle against the run. The Cowboys defense struggles against the run. Jalen Hurts isn't like dropping back 50 times a game trying to throw down the field. And the Eagles have a very good defense. They're underrated at defense. You know, we got two yeah. of the two best corner combos in the league. You know, we got our linebacking core is solid. Our front four is solid. You know, our safeties have been playing solid. So if you think about what the Cow, I mean, CeeDee Lamb had less than 100 yards receiving. He had like 50 some odd yards receiving. Um, Zeke Elliott had like 50 yards rushing. I just don't see them coming into Philly with that type of offensive productivity and winning games, especially when the Eagles aren't making mistakes on the offensive side of the ball. So if their defense comes out here and punches us in the mouth at home, you know, so be on a Sunday night on Sunday night yeah. football on Sunday in night. our you house you the, you in, the our house. in our house in our house in our house. house I will you be have front number one quarterback, the number one quarterback. Number one quarterback. With the Cowboys the line thing. That, that that y'all haven't heard offensive line and it's kind of important. You saw in the Arizona game, you guys just did screens and quick outs all night, which is why AJ Brown didn't get many catches because that line was banged up and they didn't think they could protect. Now, that Cowboy D-line is for real. So, you know, y'all probably going to do a game plan similar to that unless one of those guys comes back from the O-line. But that, that O-line issue is, is a real issue, though. Come on now. I'm not, I'm, not saying it I'm not saying it it's isn't. I'm not saying it isn't. But I also say this. Right. You know, we are, we're a run-first team. We're not necessarily a team that's going to sit there and air it out on you anyway. So, yeah, A.J. Brown didn't get a lot of the touches, but at the same time, they're doubling Brown now. You know, and see, when you double Brown – you see Smith is going to eat. And if you double Smith or you try to double Smith, you still got Goddard underneath. So they're going to go to the tight end. You know, they'll sneak him out. You know, when they do max, max protection, maybe have two tight end sets, maybe sneak Dallas Goddard out and see Michael Parsons is going to have to make a decision. You know, is he going to drop back into coverage, come in there, plug the gap, or he's going to, you know, you know, he's going to cover Dallas Goddard. And Dallas Goddard is a good receiver too. So it's a lot of weapons. Yeah, but You know, the problem with Dallas Goddard is he can't run. So you know he's throwing it to him as an as an option, but the boy don't have no legs. He can't run fast. Yeah. He's not a fast yeah. runner. What about leading receivers? What are you talking run. about? He's, he's, he's fine. He's, he's not. He's not fast. He's, he's not a fast runner. Yeah, he's a tight he's end, a tight and he, end. And he what, plays what like. Want? It. So I want I mean, him to be able to the, get some speed up instead of just catching it, taking a few steps and falling. Stacy, you know Dallas Goddard is one of the top five tight ends in the league right now. Okay, so you're saying you, – I, I, I mean, think he's you overrated. Owners, I'm glad he, I'm glad he plays <laughs> – wait a minute. I'm I glad mean, he plays for Eagles. 
but I think he's overrated. Besides, nah, he grew he up, he grew know. up a Dallas no, fan. Know. That's why he was undefeated. named Dallas. Y'all are undefeated. Yeah. And she's still upset. I know this is a Negadelphian. This is a thing about football. Live audience is a Negadelphian's. You know, this is what we do. Oh, right? never. We complain about oh, being never. Five, you know, we oh, complain never. About top five, oh, never. Tied in. Oh, never. We complain about having. Yeah. Uh, a, a oh, never. Yes, Alex, ever. Alex Gallagher might have seven catches against the Cowboys because they're going to concede that. They're going to give that up. But they're coming out. I'll take, I'll take that all day. I'll take that all and, day. And see, that's another problem. This is the problem with the NFL. Why don't they, and, and I must say, I heard this from Stephen A. It wasn't my idea. This was Stephen A. He said, put a flag tag on the quarterback instead of going after your quarterback. Because when these guys, these safeties and these, these other guys, the uh, uh, defensive line, go after your quarterback, they can really hurt them, which is a horrible thing. And like you just said, Nas, they're going to run after Jalen. They're going to try to yeah, get him down. They're going to hurt him. I mean, but, but gonna try to hurt him and sport. they should never do that. This is ne not nothing new. Right. So I, I think they yeah, were sending a message to the to league do? with these ticky tack fouls. You saw one last night when you, you know, clearly, you know, it was a sack fumble um, and they mm -hmm. called it unnecessary roughness. You saw Brady always right. gets those calls. This is nothing new with there. But after what they saw with Tua and all the all the backlash, they received, um, and, and you're going to see you're going to see this a lot going forward where the sky cams and stuff are going to be monitoring you know, player safety and pulling them. If you see a wobble or a wiggle or whatever going on after a ding, you're going to get dinged in football. There's no, I mean, there's no question. I mean, these guys are running high speeds, cracking each other. So, I mean, they're going to try to do what they can to protect the players. But at the same time, it's not like the game isn't a violent game. It's a violent game. You're going to have these injuries. So, I mean, all right. So we're, we're running out, out of time. This, this is a self-imposed NFL problem. They wanted to stop evolution and create rules so these slow-footed uh, quarterbacks could, you know, be the faces of the franchise and run it the way they are. Every quarterback should be similar to Lamar Jackson, and you should have backups behind them in a similar fashion. The athletes should match the athleticism on the field. So that's why we got all these targeting rules and everything else for the quarterback because they have to try to figure out a way to legislate them to stay in the game. Yeah, because they're oh, like that. They got these heavy feet. <laughs> they can't. They can't move in the pocket. They can't move out of the pocket so that they can adjust in another way. Isn't that what you're saying, Nas? Yeah. So but they have to protect the quarterbacks. They have to protect the quarterback in the pocket. If the quarterback takes off, and the quarterbacks are athletes. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're running Steve, out of time. You were just complaining about the softness of NASCAR and how NASCAR is getting <laughs> this year and all this stuff. Now you're saying you got to protect the quarterback. What's going on? I mean, you can't have it both ways. You, you don't want NASCAR ways. to go to electric cars. He loves then you it want both them ways. to protect the quarterback in the NFL. You know what? Okay, electric okay, let's, we're running out of time. I want to do. Excuse me. Excuse me. We're running out of time for sports, but we have someone. Hello from Argentina. Uh, Rolando Conmus Flo said hello from Argentina. So hi, Argentina. Um, Hola. hey, speak Spanish in Argentina, right? Or they, no, yeah. So let's oh. talk about Devonte Smith. Yes. Wait a minute. Look, I thought we were done with sports. Now you're coming in with another. No, I said we're almost done with the about, NFL. But we Devontae, can't go off without Devontae talking Adam. about Devontae Smith. Oh, hating, haters going oh, hate. Hey, Steven, hey. Steven, Steven, you go about Devonte Smith. You got thirty seconds. Why don't we talk about Devontae Adams, who pushed a cameraman? Yeah, I mean Adams. Be, oh, okay. Oh, oh I mean Adams. Say, I'm sorry. He maybe, he, he maybe kicked out now. You know what? Devontae Adams. I'm talking Adams about Adams. Screwed up. I'm sorry. Okay. You know, he screwed up. I'm sorry, man. Like Adams. That was with, he was with a hot girlfriend, which was the Green Bay Packers. And then he left because the hot girlfriend was getting weird and he didn't know if she was going to still be with him. So he went to another place. Where it was his old girlfriend, which was Carr, and he's like, I'm gonna be with Carr because he's more solid. And then he's losing games, stupid games that they should win. They should have beaten Kansas City, and now they lost as he was so mad. And then a cameraman jumped in front of him, like he was the uh, uh, what was that lady die? And then he just he was a paparazzi, and he just pushed him out the way. But guess what? He may be kicked out of football for a little while for doing that. But the man you know, should not have gotten in his way. Uh, Devontae Adams 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Aguna, Aguna, that could have been a woman. It could have, when you walk in that walkway, it's cement. It's not soft grass. He, if, if he man. had done that me, I would have called the cops and I would have pressed charges. If he had been in the street and did that, he would have been bailing himself out of so-and-so jail. Okay. These guys you know, go too Okay, far. I know we're going to sensationalize this, but it is a rough game. How can it you is not? An emotional game. Can I finish, please? Right. These, these guys are human beings, right? So imagine you just got off. You, you were out there on the road. People are throwing, spitting at you, throwing all this. They, they, you know, when you see what these guys go through on a daily basis, it's a lot. Now, I'm not sitting here trying to justify his actions or anything like that. Yes, but let's sure. not pretend like these guys aren't human beings. They don't get emotional. They don't have trauma. They don't have these things. And you're 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 just coming off. And he's an athlete. He's a competitor. He's walking out there. And all of a sudden, you you know, you got these flashes. Everybody jumping in your face. Want to get want to get that money shot of you at a point in time where you're like really trying to process and and get things through and and kind of and also ramp down off of the adrenaline needed to even survive this game. I mean, you're coming off of this high, this emotional roller coaster, and all of a sudden someone jumping in your face with a camera trying to get that money shot of you or trying to sell that, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, you may lose it a little bit and be like, you know, just leave me alone. Let me go and do what I got to do. Let me let me get out of here, right? I, you know, Kansas City is a hard place to play in. It, it's like, it, it's crazy. So, yeah, not to make any excuses, but – these guys are emotional. I get it. I understand. That's, that's I, we, an excuse. We see it on the little league fields all the time, where these kids, you know, they let the emotions get the best of them sometimes, and it just happens. Now, she right. they're not children. No, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. But if excuse you're going to protect me. players, my last, like last point is this: kid. if they're going to protect, gonna protect players, if they want to protect the quarterbacks, they want to protect all these players. They need to also protect them from the exposure to all these cameramen and stuff like that. They shouldn't be authorized to get down there on the field. Give the players space, and it wouldn't happen. All right. Excuse me. Um, you right sound on. crazy. Right on. You're exactly. You, exact you oh, sound oh, crazy. Oh, no, I'm going to finish my them. point. No, I'm going to finish my point. You sound crazy to say don't let a cameraman come on the field when you get paid millions of dollars to be seen playing is insane. He wasn't a cameraman. First off, he had lighting and some other things up there. So what he's he needed on there, there so you can be there? seen. Secondly, these guys get there. paid. Excuse me. I didn't say anything when you were talking. These guys get paid millions, millions of dollars to play. They can't take a few uh, cotton candy bags on the head. They can't no. take a few of those other things on the head. They get no. millions. This if, comes if, with a job. Everybody, and... everybody, no. everybody that does a job knows the perks and the not so good perks of their job, and they deal with it. Any job you have, you know what the not good things are, and you deal with it. Why are they any special than anybody else? And for him to just go and push them is outrageous. It's wrong. And you've got to start calling wrong, wrong, or you won't know when it's right and when it's wrong. Go ahead, uh, Nas. Y'all going to get me fired up. You can get fired up. Leave the players alone. Give them space. They should protect them. You're going to protect them, protect them. Yeah. He's getting paid millions of dollars. Go ahead, Nas. I muted him. Not a slave. For what he did. He shouldn't have pushed the guy. He didn't even try to help the guy out. Uh, helped the guy up after he did it. He was wrong. But I'm not going to go too far and start talking about jail and stuff like that. Uh, he's probably going to be suspended for a game. He's going to get hit with a fine. When Dennis Rodman did this years ago in Chicago when he kicked that cameraman by the court, he paid $200,000. So I'm assuming with inflation, uh, yeah, Devontae's looking at a pretty penny because this guy should sue him. I'm sure he's being contacted by lawyers and everything else. He should sue him. But the NBA did move cameramen back a little further uh, under the basket because they didn't want that situation to happen again. So should the NFL explore the idea of, OK, uh, cameras or lighting guys should probably not be in the way as they're heading towards the tunnel like that last shot is probably not that important. So, yeah, they should adjust that as far as, you know, them being there right at the moment. 
uh, when the player's walking off disappointed, mad, or whatever. But no matter what, Devontae got to pay for this, man, because he's wrong. Like, you can't do that to somebody. It's assault. Right. It's assault. And let, let wrong is it. wrong. They can sign him, but let him play the game. Don't kick him out of the next game. That's wrong. I do think there's some accountability. They're making a lot of money. They need to, you know, hold themselves in, you know, certain regards. But it's again, this is a it's an emotional sport. I don't know. Nobody on here has played in the pay that photographer a million dollars. He can pay that photographer a million dollars. Don't take the game away from him. It's no, in the moment. Not, I mean. That, that's that's there. I mean, if someone came in your into into your job and, and threw a picture, trying to take pictures of you, even though you're getting okay. paid, and even though you may know that it's part of your job, you're not gonna like it. So you sometimes it just happens. I'm not saying this. All know. right. So if Todd comes and punches somebody in the face, if Todd comes and punches somebody in the face, like Stephen or Keith or something, they said. Then that sh- don't don't let him off the show. Let him stay. No, I mean, don't don't. I mean, he's, we, he's, he's just very very passionate about the show. On the show next week, and, and we will sue him for a lot of money, maybe fifty dollars. But then whatever he can afford. Yeah, we'll give Todd a fine. We'll make we'll we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll say bad Todd on his little but name. He's got to be on the show because we don't have a show without him. You sound crazy. You sound crazy. Guess what? You sound crazy. You sound if crazy. Okay, one monkey stops no you show. Get tied, no one monkey for a week. No, no show. Terms for a week. You sound crazy. Hey, Aguna, one monkey do you stops have no show. Like I do in fantasy. Don't get it twisted. Aguna, do you have get it like twisted. I do? No, I fantasy? don't. No, I don't. I wish I did, but I, I don't. Well, I do, and I'm 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 very serious about this. Don't don't make him miss any games. Yeah, he had so, he had about sixteen or seventeen points this past week. And look, wait a minute. Let me yeah, say to Stephen. Uh, Stephen, look at your look. You're trying to impress Keith because this look today is pretty good. And then you had those glasses on. That's he, a good he, did he oh, shave his mullet? He shaved the mullet. He shaved his mullet. Hey, what are you doing over there? Hey, okay. you must be going to you. He's He's trying to get married. <laughs> That's to you, Todd, no. not Keith. No. So, of course, I had no other – there's no other questions for uh, sports before we move on to politics. I want to talk about sports. I know Keith – I mean, um, yeah, (laughs) Keith and Todd know nothing about sports. Excuse me. I know about about sports. Listen. You want to talk about Serena? I don't want to talk about Serena. I want to talk about the um, NBL. No, NFL. Pickleball. You want to talk about pickleball? (laughs) Are you uh, well, hurry up, we're almost out of time. Um, this is what I wanted to say about the Eagles. They have been playing well, and they won five straight. So they, they're really good. And if they keep up this good work, they can probably win the World Series. But, but can they beat Dallas this week? Yes, ma'am. That's the Cowboys. So let oh, me... Well. Look at my screen. (laughs) Look at my screen. President uh, Biden is pardoning. Yes. Yes. And he's going to pardon all federal offenses of simple marijuana possession. Wait a minute. I'm trying to pull up in first major steps towards decriminalization. And he's doing this. So he can get Cousin Todd's vote. Right, Cousin Todd? You already got it. Yes, ma'am. And then, too, what he's doing is uh, trying to right uh, wrongs. Uh, I don't expect Keith to agree um, because it helps out people that look like him and his mother. But Uh, um, Wait, 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 wait. Yes. You're you're crossing. God, you're about to cross the line. Let's stop. Let's stop. Okay, so like I was trying to say, uh, this war on drugs started with um, uh, Nixon, actually, not Ronald Reagan, but with Nixon. And it was all a ruse to be, because he didn't like black people. 
So he figured what better way to get them than locking them up for petty crimes. And as a matter of fact, Nixon said marijuana was the worst drug known to man. Uh, so what would that say about cocaine or heroin? So nevertheless, this war on drugs where people were arrested just for possessing marijuana, not distributing, trying to sell it, just for having it. You get five to 10 years. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. And, and it's obvious. Just like um, where you got cocaine, if a white person is found with cocaine, you get a certain amount of time in jail. But if you're found with crack, you get more time. So it was all a scam, and which is what uh, Joe Biden is um, trying to rectify. Pot right. should be black legal. Why do black people just do cocaine and not crack? Why did black people have to go to crack cheaper. and not cocaine? It's cheaper. So, so, but now white people have always uh, done more drugs than blacks, always, but it's the blacks that are arrested for it. So, uh, Keith, um, are you going to vote for, or do you think that President Biden will get more votes come 2024 when he runs for reelection because he's decriminalized marijuana? Well, he might, you know, there are people who are like Todd and, uh, and Aguna, who don't seem to really, and Naj, you know, they don't really, it doesn't matter what he does, they'll probably support it. So, uh, well, let's talk about this specifically. Know, I think, um, yes, I think I would answer your question by saying, yes, there will be people who will vote for him because he decriminalizes marijuana. And do you think it's but a I good think, idea also, to decriminalize you know, he it? He didn't do the it. The question of he uh, did, marijuana. He didn't decriminalize marijuana. But he seems to answer is the marijuana of today of the same strength as the marijuana back in my day. I wonder, and I would say, no, the marijuana back in my day, when I was a kid, that mar and when I was in high school, that marijuana was certainly a lot softer than the marijuana today. Have you tried both? About the 50s? Have and you the smoked both? You smoked it then and now? Because I, I was working with kids and kids had marijuana but it was laced with other stuff, you know? It could be, I don't know. We're not talking about lacing, we're talking about oh, marijuana. Marijuana is not the same potency today as it was. How do you know? Years Have ago. you smoked it recently? I know because I was told that by people who smoke it. Oh, that's hearsay. So, I mean, that to me that's is- That's hearsay. Uh, go no. on and get high. So, go, uh, you and Steven, go and get high uh, and let me know. And they commit a crime, they, get out, they lose control of their faculties, then that's when Keith. the crime is committed. Hey, Keith. Well, all right, okay. That's not true. People if who you smoke you know, marijuana do not do not without, lose control without of their faculties. Uh -oh. If you're in paradise, marijuana is a relaxant. They don't lose control. People lose control when they drink too much. Marijuana is a relaxant. Marijuana has qualities. That's why yeah, they have mar medical marijuana that actually helps Thank people you. that have anxiety oh, issues. And other things like that. Thanks. Marijuana is actually good for people. The, what the, if you the, mix marijuana? The, the pharmaceutical with companies wow, has made uh, marijuana an enemy, so they could give, they could make other, make people take medication that's not good for them. Marijuana well, is a know, is a is a good thing. Things is that okay? Okay, so Aguna, Aguna, no matter what Biden does. does Biden can do something that is maybe fiscally responsible or lo lowering government outreach, um, and it will still be seen by some folks as being bad. Marijuana, I mean, if look at the science, look at what's going on. I mean, you're locking people up for petty crimes. What does that do for them later in life where, you know, they can't vote, they also can't get jobs, they can't contribute to the economy? But if you decriminalize, and Steve is right, he didn't decriminalize it, he just pardoned the people that were first time offenders or whatever based simple on simple possession for simple possession. So he, he, he made those changes. And I mean, you think about it, think about our criminal justice system and how of a burden it is not only on society, but as we, we as taxpayers, you know, you can repurpose, you know, police resources instead of going after these types of offenses to things that really are, are bad, like murder and things like that. And again, you know, you, 
you know, people have fear about marijuana being these gateway drugs into other things, right? So there is that aspect of it, but there's also the but aspect of if you legalize it, you can tax it. You just like you tax alcohol, you can regulate it. So it's like, you know, maybe maybe that is kind of bad because it expands government, but at the same time, you know, we're looking at government resources allocated to 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 prosecute offenses that aren't really hurting society to the proportion that they think about it, right? It's another thing. Okay. So when I look at government control and federal and overreach of federal government, like true conservatives or fiscal conservatives should do, Keith, wink, wink, you know, you got to take in consideration, you know, what's going on and, and, you know, being able to, you know, should government really even be involved with this, right? Right. No. Aguna. Yeah. Aguna, can so I interject nice. in Virginia? Can I interject in Virginia really quick, Stacey? In Virginia, you can grow your own marijuana, but you can't sell it. So what that does is take the criminal element out of it. But if you want to grow it in your own house, you can have marijuana for yourself. You don't have to go to any marijuana place and buy it. You don't have to buy it from anybody that could lace it, like Keith said, with anything else. You can grow your own. You know what you get. And that's what Virginia did. That's what every state should do. If somebody wants to smoke marijuana and they believe it's healthier than alcohol, which it is, healthier than cigarettes, which it's scientifically proven to be better than cigarettes. Wow, that, Stephen that there's talking so about science. Proof. We need to record this yes. show. Scientifically it, oh. proven then that people can grow it for themselves in their own houses, on their own property. Then why not have that? Why have an element of the, the dirty drug dealer that can sell you stuff that Keith was saying they could have fentanyl okay. in it or whatever else that could screw you up or kill you. Why not grow so your me, own? Okay, that's thank you. Let me hear from Nas. Nice. That's why I'll call Virginia. And we, and we have to move on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's get into the good and the bad. Uh, so the good of this is this is another step towards legalization and also normalization of marijuana and people not looking at it with some of this old reefer madness right. propaganda they were fed when they were, you know, younger. So this is a good thing. In the 1930s. In that, you're right. Now, now, the bad side of this is uh, because it's federal, we're talking about the least amount of people who are locked up for marijuana because we're talking about federal prisons, not state, not state prisons. So this is actually isn't going to affect as many people as Biden is getting good headlines for doing this. He's actually getting more PR for this than he actually deserves. So this is going to go to the state government on what they want to do in each individual state. So a lot of them states, because this is so popular, they're probably going to ride with Biden and actually, you know, fulfill this. But when you go to more red states where everything Biden does has to be, you know, a negative, they're probably not going to do this. That's also the states where you have most of these, uh, you know, private prisons where, you know, the correction officer union and everything else has been you know, dumping money into the Republican Party to stop the legalization of marijuana because that would do what? Put them out of business. So Biden's getting really good headlines for this. And again, it's a step in the right direction, but it's being presented as if he legalized or if he retroactively uh, was removing sentences from prisoners who were locked up in state prisons, which is where the majority of people locked up for marijuana are. So he's getting way more pub for this than he should. But it's a step in a good. Uh, it's a step in the right direction. So if if we're going in step in the right direction, and we're going to talk about, uh, uh, I was talking about Biden getting votes for it. Let's go into elections and let's talk about these November elections and talk about Herschel Walker in particular, who was uh, accused of Did paying you see his glasses. Stacey? No, I didn't see his glasses. What's what's up with his glasses? At his last presser, he's wearing smart guy glasses now. Oh, so tell us, Nas, you're down there in the ATL, and I'm showing this article that says now Walker says he knows the woman who said he paid for an abortion and maintains she's lying. So he's wow. basically they're saying he's a con you know contradiction walking. He's saying, and this article is uh, wait a minute. By Politico.com, written okay. by Kelly Garrity on October 11th at 5.29 p.m. Um, yeah. <laughs> so he says he knows nothing about an abortion. He's currently engaged in a neck-and-neck -neck race with Senator Raphael Warnock in Georgia. Uh, he said 
in an interview, he told uh, ABC News that I knew it was a lie and I said it was a lie and I just move on. And that's why I said it's sad that people said October surprise, but you're destroying families. So how are people taking it in uh, Georgia and will this make a big difference in the race with him and Senator Warnock, Nas? Well, well you, like you can go back to 2016. This is like 2016. It's directly separate in Georgia. So the people who are willing to overlook all of Trump's flaws and make excuses for everything, those are the same voters who would do the same for Herschel down here. So in the red areas where the Brian Kemp voters and people who've always typically voted Republican, they're willing to hold their nose and vote for uh, Herschel. But the blue areas of Georgia and some of the more purple areas of Georgia, uh, Raphael, who has kind of Warnock, who has kind of a good record down here for what he's done this last term. And also, remember, this is a guy who's a pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church, the legacy of Martin Luther King. We're talking about a pastor here. So in those areas, Warnock is doing really well. So that's kind of why the race is tight. But ultimately, you know, when it comes to Herschel, most of this stuff doesn't matter because those people are willing to vote for anything that says R next to it. So initially he denied the claims and the Daily Beast kind of held back on their reporting. And then after he denied it, they brought out that this was one of his other uh, baby mothers who made the claim. And she also has the, the get well card with his handwriting on it. They've got the text messages from Herschel to the kid where every couple of months in the middle of the night, Herschel would text the kid, I love you. And you know, kid would ask, are you going to come to my baseball game? And Herschel's response was, I love you. So it, it, it's a weird thing, but this is, you know, another one of his baby mothers. And he, they tried to present it as if this was just some person looking for money or something like that. He didn't but know who it was. Christian Walker, Herschel's son, making the accusations about Herschel saying he was never actually in his life. Uh, he's a liar. He's trying to present himself as a man of God when in actuality, uh, they were running for their lives at times, had to move four different times uh, in a two-year span to run away from Herschel's violence against his mother. And then we have this story where Herschel, who's running a campaign where he's saying uh, abortion uh, should be illegal and abortion is wrong, and, you know, he's against abortion, we have this clear case of one of his baby mothers exposing that Herschel paid for an abortion with her, mm -hmm. sent her a get well card, and here we are. Right. So, Well, they don't, they don't care. Either they don't believe true. that happened, or they don't care that it's that happened. True. And see, look, Stephen knows because he was there. He was there it's when she got true. pregnant. It's not true. So Keith, so Keith, you know, what's interesting about um, Georgia is it's not so much of a red state anymore. It, it really is turning. So if you look at that, how can you um, or any other GOP member support someone like Herschel Walker, who, you know, basically paid for this woman to get an abortion, said he's against it, but yet he went for it for his own child. And held a gun to his it's wife's not head. not true. Tell him, Keith. It's not uh, true. It's a lie. Uh, he said. He said he did not. He didn't. He said it was a lie. So, uh, have they proven him wrong? A lie. Yeah, he paid for the abortion with a check. Right. Have he did oh, not. That was the. That was the mother of his child. He sent a check. To okay, him. we gotta. Keith, you can't ask child. Keith. Huh? Keith, this is your turn to talk. You can't ask questions if you want to have some time to talk about the contradiction and the support of someone who was so contradictory. Well, I get off of that and talk about him holding a gun I mean, to his wife's head. Talk when I'm interrupted so talk much. Go ahead. Say, I will say that I don't know. I mean, who knows the truth about this? I mean, has it, I, I don't know. I don't know the truth. So he says he didn't. They say he did. Everybody else on this show is accusing him of, that he did. So, uh, you know, he paid for an abortion. But all, all I'll say is that if he did pay for an abortion, that was the responsible thing to do. And certainly, uh, you know, wow. he should lie about wow. it for abortion. That was the responsible thing to do. Way to punt. Way to punt. So you, you know what I mean? And, and then so, all of the people. So, who, Aguna. And wait a minute. Wait a minute. All the people who I are. I gave you the chimes. <laughs> all of the people. You, you're, you're in the process all, of punting it. Keep all of ahead. the people who are in favor of a woman's cho right to choose ought to be hilariously happy because she chose an abortion just what they like and he paid for it. So it's all done. All right, that's the way okay, they Okay, so Aguna, 
My my question to you is, as a as a Republican, how can you support Herschel Walker blindly based on what you're learning? I mean, you don't. I mean, this is not the best the Republican Party can do in Georgia. I mean, in the to say anything to the contrary is just flat out ridiculous. This you're guy's a clown. Republican? I mean, no. he's a clown. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, I'm one of the old school Republicans that actually look at the platform and hold the party accountable for actually having old policy school? conversations, not this, this blind ideology nonsense no. where you see a clown as a candidate and somehow you want to close your eyes and just vote R. Old no, what is Herschel Walker going to do to huh. move the needle for the people of Georgia as far as low taxes? Well, smaller government. He's not talking about all this stuff. He's running around here babbling about him being a poor old country boy, don't know nothing and all. Come on, that's not the best we can do down there. Marjorie Taylor Greene, who sits there and tries to run up to and not do anything legislatively to help the people of Georgia, it's up to the people of Georgia to decide. But if that's the best they can do for a Senate, we're not talking about House. We're not talking about Mayor. We're talking about a Senator from Georgia who can't really articulate any plausible platform in the Republican Party, yet you want me to sit here and say, oh, it's wrong or, you know, let's deny the facts and all this. No, the dude's a clown. Get him out of here. It's not the best we can do. He hasn't articulated one policy discussion that he what's he going to do. He's just running as a figurehead, a yes man. He has no business being a candidate, period. And to okay, do so thank and you. to endorse him is just making you look like a Yahoo and a fool. So I'm not going to sit there and, pl- and join that clown show. I want to see clowns. I'll go to the show. Okay, Stephen. Stephen, you got to be quick. There's only one source that says this without any representation that says this, that he paid for an abortion. And it's not true. It is a bad source. It is a far left source that is trying to uh, cut him down because he's making waves. This is there's this one source. This is a mother of one of his children that he sent $700 to in a check, not for an abortion because an abortion doesn't cost $700. He sent it for his child that he had with this woman. And this is a lie that is made up by one source. So check your sources before you comment because you, and nobody on this show knows what they're talking about. Herschel Walker is okay, a good so guy. What's his, what's his a man of God. What is a policy he's never that he's going to invoke as a senator? He's a good guy. Look at Warnock. Look at who he's running yeah, against. Look at, yeah, I'm he's looking at my He tried I'm to run over his wife with his car. Guy. The guy I'm Herschel Walker is going guy. against tried to kill his wife. So talk about Herschel Walker know. playing for an abortion. Oh, that's that's a lie. That's not true. Yeah, but, but we want to believe that. you. You're that's saying the truth. Look it up. All right. Cousin Todd, finish it up. And he okay. Go back to growing marijuana in your basement, Stephen. <laughs> okay. You're, you're this invited, is the thing. You know, you can. Let's skip over the abortion thing, which he's always for abortion. But let's skip no, over that. Not. What about him holding a gun to his wife's head? Well, he I was mentally. He said he did. I was that mentally was unstable, and Not now only, I got it. He actually published it in his book. It's in his book, Stephen. He said that. Well, he I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. what he wrote in his own book. <laughs> That's a far <laughs> left conspiracy to incriminate him. I don't believe what he wrote in his own book. He's going against. So anyway, listen, this is the thing. The man <laughs> is mentally unstable. <laughs> no, he's not. He said he was. Oh, would you let him? Would you let him be your senator, Stephen? Yeah, he got to be a senator. A senator Warnock, who tried to kill his no, wife. No, no, no. Would you vote for him as a senator? I don't care who he's running against. I'm asking you about him as a man, as a candidate. You don't care about women. So, so, so the guy who who may have pulled off too fast and almost run over someone's foot. You think he tried to kill the person, but the person who published in a book that they put a gun to the he woman's head. He runs car towards the person and runs over that yeah. foot. He was trying to run over them. Well, you see, you see that? You see that audience? That's what you call a Yahoo pivot that Stephen no, does he, get. He, he didn't even address the question. I got to move on. I got to move on. I want to talk about, um, does anyone, not anyone, not us in particular, do you have anything to say? Say how the race is going for uh, Brian Kemp versus Stacey uh, Abrams. Well, it's kind of 
But this one is a little different. It's it's not as uh it's not as like quick and easy to see where the dividing lines are. Uh because Stacy has kind of made a lot of inroads in South Georgia and rural Georgia and some really air and, and some really red areas where typically Democrat Democrats aren't uh popular, uh because she kind of created this outreach chain that's in Georgia over the past four years. So I think she's going to surprise a lot of people with how well she does in this election. Like Brian Kemp still has, you know, that red coalition there, but there's a lot of that that has kind of turned off, been turned off by him and turned a little more purple, which is why we saw Trump didn't win uh, Georgia last time. So that was kind of an indicator of how well Stacey Abrams was going to do. And again, on this very show, uh, Stacey, you played the audio of Brian Kemp's last, uh, you know, election commercial to get an idea on what he what he's about. Uh, he's continuing to do that. And we're also having the same problem election wise with Brian Kemp and his connection uh, at the Office of Secretary of State, where last time they did a cross check and remove voters from the rolls. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a lot of good research out there where they're telling people to keep checking to see if you're being knocked off the uh, voter registration rolls uh, because Brian Kemp uh, proved he's willing to do that to win the election last time. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, this one, this one is a little this one's a little more interesting. Okay, Aguna, uh, gas prices. I, I said that President Biden with, went with his hat in his hand to Saudi Arabia to ask them to, hey, loosen up, loosen up, loosen up, loosen up, and let out more oil so we can get this gas. Now OPEC said, oh, uh, guess what? We're cutting the coffers. We don't care what Biden said. Aguna, how's that going to yeah. affect our inflation yeah. and are pushed towards a recession. So here's the thing, and we're not, we don't have enough time on the show to really talk about the nuances of the global oil market and why <clears throat> prices are truly high in this country, primarily because of what President Obama did when he allowed domestic oil companies to sell overseas in the global market. So it really doesn't, so OPEC as a cartel, it can cut or produce more or go up and down, but because we have a global economy and because Russia is part of OPEC selling to India and China and all this other stuff. It really doesn't matter what Saudi Arabia does. Now, from a perception standpoint, of course, uh, oil brokers who are the middlemen are going to use whatever war, whatever, whatever sensationalized media headline to to sell and, and buy oil futures, which is the reason why it actually the oil prices go up and down has nothing to do with drill, baby, drill, has nothing to do with all these other factors because it's really going to yeah. take five to 10 years for you to actually identify you well. Start drilling drilling it out. Today. And yes. then at the end of the day, they don't have to sell it domestically. They can sell it on the global market for much more than domestically. So unless you want to go to some type of socialist mm-hmm. country where private oil companies in the U.S. can't sell overseas, you're going to have this fluctuation in oil markets right? like we're having now. Now, of course, what's going to happen is OPEC is going to, you know, cut back oil supplies. And if you follow the oil market, I think oil is right, right around $85, $85 a barrel right now. And it's not Down proportionate. Or, it doesn't correlate to the actual prices at the pump. So there's a lot of price gouging going on. You know, oil companies are having record profits. It's not that we have oil shortages. They're just hedging the price of oil. They're self-inflating the price of oil. So it's not like you can drill your way out of this. It all comes down to yeah, supply yeah. chain and the oil company's ability to set the market. If you truly want to be energy independent, I said this before on this show, buy a Tesla, get off of oil, you know, stop buying, don't go in, in, in buy an electric vehicle. If you truly want to be energy independent, nobody wants to be an energy independent because when I look at my 401k and I look at the stocks that I own, there are oil stocks in that. So in some form or fashion, the American economy is rolling because of the oil sales. But nobody wants to talk about that. Hey, and, and Aguna, no, can I can ask you throw, one baby, question throw. before y'all move on? Go ahead, Nas. Uh, sure. Could there be some type of regulatory agency or idea where you say, okay, if you want to speculate on oil, you also actually have to pay for the capacity to hold said oil? And see, now, and to that point, no, I mean, if there is, you wouldn't see the prices go the way they are right now because you have a middleman that's not even holding on to that supply, being able to set the price without sight unseen, supply untouched. So to your point, if the government- So how does that affect in, me? 
How does that affect the every day? I'm, how does that affect the everyday yeah, person know, like me going to work? They're, setting, they're home. setting the price for oil. They're setting the price of, of oil. They're inflating the price without even having to store or have to worry. We could about. produce more than OPEC when Donald Trump was in office. That's not we true. We produce no, more than OPEC. True. And here comes the that nonsense. That is true. You are a liar. Are under Biden, you are there are more oil, oil licenses there. issued under we Biden. produce more oil in the first in country his, than they do in the You're not going to talk OPEC. facts. You're just going to talk blind. You are a liar. No, it's yeah. not. Joe it's Biden, Biden not. shut it all down. Again, here we go. Joe Joe what time, time is it? Is down. that time for Stephen to go on his diatribe of nonsense? You are either ignorant or you're complacent. Don't attack me. Just attack the facts. We had energy independence in this country. And if you said we don't. Like you have no you're simply a liar. You have no clue what you're talking about. Donald Trump, okay, check this out. We do. You How know, many oil, oil licenses in the country? If we had the capacity you? to produce more oil than OPEC, we would be a member of OPEC. That's a okay. simple thing to understand. Like the best way to explain this, I tried to explain this to somebody the other day. And I said, "Look, just think of it like cocaine. If you were selling cocaine <laughs> and your rival was Pablo Escobar, guess what?" You better as, have as you better have as much as he has. For, if you piss him off, he can always sell cocaine cheaper than you. No, and eventually yeah, yeah. one of you is gonna run out of cocaine. And guess what? It ain't gonna be Pablo Escobar. So, so here's the thing, Arabia, Stacey, this is my last point. Draw in the sand and draw oil really cheaply and really expensive, really good crude oil that doesn't have to be refined that much. You compare that to America, where you're talking about look like the Keystone Pipeline thing went down because what? It was going to be too expensive, and it was going to be a really bad pollutant that nobody wanted to pay for. And, so, and hey, people like Stephen and Keith Saudi Arabia don't want an oil refinery. refinery. That's not people the same. like Stephen and Keith don't want an oil refinery in their backyard. You know, there's no, especially a state of the art one, right? So they're not going to build an oil refinery in this country. Yet they're going to come on the show and babble about Trump being energy independent. There's no such thing. As energy independence, right. as, as a farce, as a talking you know, point that's hard, never been proven. And also. During the Trump years, uh, we did sell the oil refinery in Port Arthur, Texas, to Saudi Arabia. So that is one part of Trump's legacy. Also makes you wonder why they gave him and his uh, son-in-law $2 billion. But that's another story, Stephen. You maybe want to look into it. All right. So let's look at this article I shared here that's on screen. Stephen ran out um, of He's upset. <laughs> President, he's, he's um, home. look at this. Uh, President Joe Biden's stark warning Thursday, it's past Thursday night that the world faces the highest prospect of nuclear war in 60 years was not based on any new intelligence about Russian pre President Vladimir Putin's intentions or changes in Russia's nuclear posture. The U.S. still has seen no evidence that Putin is moving toward using Russia's nuclear capability, nor is there any intelligence showing he's decided to do so. But Biden's comments, according to this article, laid out in starker terms than other U.S. officials have used to date, reflected heightened concerns inside his administration about the risk of Russia carrying out a nuclear strike in Ukraine, where Russian forces have recently faced a string of defeats. This, to me is worrying if the That's president the of the United States is doing this and thinking this and his administration is feeling this way, you ought to be worried too. This was an article written at CNN Politics by Phil Mattingly, Jeremy Diamond, and Kevin Liptak, uh, updated 10.31 a.m. on Friday, October 7th. Why should you not be worried, Stephen? I thought he took his ball and went home. No, he's back. Oh, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. He, wait. he had to water this some of his marijuana plants. He's back. Now. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I got to get Stephen. Wait, wait, wait. You can go after Stephen. Nas, go after Stephen. Go ahead. Go ahead, Stephen. Hey, Nas, calm down. Wait, wait, we have a war going on. Nas, why don't we mute, mute his mic? We have a war going on right now between two, two countries two factions, and one of these countries has more nuclear weapons than anybody, and that's Russia. That's Putin. He has more nuclear weapons than anybody. So everybody should be concerned right now. It's not, it's not, it's not crazy to be concerned that nukes are not on the table because he's, he's, he was forced into this war 
because he wouldn't have gone into this war if not for the ineptitude of Joe Biden and what he had done in Afghanistan and was such a weak leader of this country. This would not have happened under uh, uh, Trump or Reagan or anybody else that had any <laughs> testicular <laughs> fortitude. It will only help. It will only happen under Joe Biden. This is the problem. This is why this country and the world is going to hell. It's because of Joe Biden oh, you and these people radical. on the show that support him the- are the useful, useless, useful idiots that are, will be the ones that are celebrating their own demise. Not people like me. Not people like Keith. We understand. Not people like me. That we love this is Trump. Real. This is real, and y'all are too stupid to understand what's going. On. I don't want to say that, but I have to because Damn. this man okay. has more nuclear weapons. Do. He has more capacity right. than Thank we you. do. Thank you. We're running out of time right now. And our country, our country has been giving money to the Ukraine in 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 open in open market. We've been openly giving money to the Ukraine and, and supporting them. You don't think we're pissing off Putin? We are. So it's nuclear. Okay. We Thank you. Piss off off Putin. So, so I'm going to go to Keith oh, next. Wait a minute. Let me go to Keith. What? Let them be pissed off. We're Let me go to Keith. Keith. Everything, Steven, web, Steven, you got to stop, honey. Be screwed up because they're going to destroy us. Okay, okay thank you. We should be he, scared of Russia. Gotcha. Biden's nuclear warning is not based on new intelligence, but based on what I read, Keith, shouldn't you be worried if the president of the United States is worried? And I'm not talking from a Christian perspective because I know that's where you're speaking from, but I'm talking about from a not, you know, from a, um, general perspective about things that humans can do? Well, the things that humans can do uh, is fail, obviously, because that's why we have a failed administration right now. You see, we're all in this kind of trouble, and this did not happen during Trump's uh, reign. When Trump was in uh, office, we didn't have any problem with uh, Russia or with uh, Putin. We didn't have any problem with North Korea. We had, you know, he even visited uh, the old North Korea guy. <laughs> and yet um, now we have all this problem, all these uh, wars or this war. And so it's going to continue as long as Biden's in office because he's weak. Biden is not a negotiator. He's weak. And, uh, you know, Putin's having a field day. So it's going to okay. continue. Thank you. Nas. Can you stop the yeah, propaganda? I think this is responsible. Uh, I think. Matter of fact, like this is why sometimes people from a different era continue to hold certain sentiments about, you know, the new world or the new day that they're living in. So all these Cold War acolytes who are around Biden who think in a similar fashion, I can see them coming to this conclusion. But ultimately, when you're talking about DEFCON 3 or DEFCON 4, a nuclear annihilation, I feel like that's not something you lay into the laps of the citizenry. This is why presidents get... <clears throat> gray hair and ulcers in the stomach while they're in office because they have to deal with the tough issues, weigh the pros and cons, and that's something that you deal with. But you don't spread that out on the kitchen table for everybody else as if that's their problem. It's like, no, you have this issue going on with Russia, and we're going to have to figure out a way to solve it. But the idea that, oh, we're all going to die, nuclear line, like, no, that's, that's not a responsible way to handle that. There was no reason for that escalation in, in language. So, yeah, I think Biden is wrong for, for even addressing that in that way. And, and to go to the previous two people who uh, I'm not sure if they should be speaking about anything, but the previous two people where they talked about the weakness of Biden, like that, that has nothing to do with anything. You think this man planned out a whole military, a military campaign based on who's president in the United States? Okay, thank no, you. His idea was he didn't like the missiles of NATO being so close to their border and they didn't want another member to join and he felt that was a use of force and he would respond in in kind. So okay, we got thank this you. tit for tat thing going on which we've always seen but to, okay, to thank you. this down to the weakness of Biden or whatever problems you have with Biden is nonsense and as far as Trump he paid off North Korea he actually made a deal with North Korea and gave the money and Trump was almost impeached for trying to do a, a quid pro quo with Zelensky for what? The Ukraine. So I don't even understand what you guys are talking about. At a certain point, uh, nice. I think Thank you guys you. have to sit at the little kids' table. You, you, you're not ready for adult conversation yet. 
Thank you. Uh, Aguna, address that and also that virtual G7 meeting today that the president had. Yeah, so at the end of the day, so look what happened. And of course, for those- Make it quick, Aguna. You can't take a half hour. You got two minutes. Please, well, let me know. So here's the thing, all right? Putin didn't want an expansion of NATO. Guess what happened? More people joined because of what had the aggression that he showed. So by baiting him into this conflict, the, the Biden actually became stronger and more influential around the world. He sold more weapons to the Ukraine, which they are being demonstrated right now and holding Russia back. You think Russia, a former superpower, is getting bogged down in a former Soviet republic? You think that looks good? You think Putin's actually proud about that? He should have, in the so old Soviet Union, he would have taken the Ukraine in three days. It's almost nine months later, and he's in retreat. They're blowing up infrastructure in previously so um, Russian occupied territory. So he's making, okay. he's exposing Putin, and he's making him he's look. Seven. And he's actually elevated. Biden has actually elevated himself on the global stage because of that. And Trump was inept in all of this. And to sit here and say that people were actually scared of him, or 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 he actually held the world in check when they were actually laughing at him. When he actually didn't know what he was, he actually almost got kidnapped by going to the DMZ. The whole Secret Service was all crazy because he went there with no conditions. He elevated a, a rogue nation like Korea as if they were actually, no other president even recognized that state. He went over there and we're celebrating and, and keep, I mean, it's crazy. You're like a clown right, there celebrating you, visit a rogue nation that no other nation or no other G7 acknowledge. I mean, Aguna, G7. Why virtual meeting with G7? Because COVID numbers are rising in China and Europe? No, I mean, the, the first thing, we have the technology to have these conversations over the web. We don't have to all meet in person. So by having a virtual G7 is actually saving taxpayer dollars by doing so. OK, so we should applaud that. At the end of the day, you know, the fact that we still have a G7 is, is telling. But again, you know. Joe Biden, if it wasn't for Joe Biden, everybody would be, everybody, you know, the world is going to crap. Look at the world. We're, we're all falling apart. You know, we're all going to hell in a hair mess because Joe Biden is just the worst president in the history of the world. Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to do our um, uh, round like table because um, we don't have much time left. We're well, out of time. Let me do this round table. Just let me make a quick comment on uh, uh, Stephen and Keith's uh, um, appreciation for Putin. No, and he made, no, how we no, made Putin no, mad. No, we love him. You don't want to hear no, it. Yeah, no, shut no, him no. You don't want to no. hear it. Stephen no. and Keith were coming to do that later. There was a time he would say, you don't want to hear it. Who you could do that Putin later. Think? Later, later, we later. Okay. We're going to do our roundtable discussion, Todd, and I'll give you opportunity to say that, but we don't have much time. Um, I, I want to, uh, real quickly, everyone will start with Keith and Stephen, uh, Nas, Aguna, and then Cousin Todd. Um, it's going to be kind of a hodgepodge of things that we weren't able to cover during the show. So one, we're going to talk about the possible COVID spread in China and Europe and how that may, uh, do you think it's coming to the United States? That's Your one. Your voice is doing that thing again. Okay. Two. Um, Hurricane Ian and, and um, Democrats were already struggling in Florida with President Biden saying that the current governor of Florida is doing well. Does that make their struggle worse? And then um, three, there was one more, but I forgot what it was. Let's start with Do uh, you Keith. think Keith is going to remember any of that? <laughs> What do you remember, Keith? <laughs> You're muted. You haven't asked. He's muted question. himself. I didn't do it. I couldn't take him off me. He did it himself. You haven't asked the question. Go ahead, Keith. What? Again, he should be at the little kids' table. I asked three questions. You didn't know what I asked what three you questions. Knew. You would not know how to answer any of those questions. Go to Keith uh, Stephen first, and then he'll help Keith. Go ahead, Stephen. Do you remember the questions? Question <laughs> no, I'm, I've been distracted. I just got distracted by something. I know. Really I that know. Weed, all that weed down there, man. Go ahead, get the irrigation system right. Get, get it. Come on, AC. No, you can call I'll, the Stephen. You want me to tell you what I was distracted by? 
It's been, uh, no, it's been a rough no, month. Just Hunter Biden's laptop. Hunter Biden's laptop. I know it. Stacy. Okay, oh, you know that. Just the FBI, the FBI told Mark Zuckerberg not to, to suppress the information. Okay, all right, let's do this. No, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to switch it. I remember what the information the was, was on the I'm laptop. I'm going to switch it. You know that? The okay, other, I'm going to switch Fauci. it. Just, just say Dr. Keith, Fauci, Stacey. No, so Keith. You know that. Keith. Keith. <laughs> No. Tommy Tupperville is a senator from Alabama. He made some racist comments this past weekend at a Trump rally. Do you think that him, he and other coaches like him, do you think that their athletes that played under them would appreciate what he's saying or vote for him today? Hmm. I have no idea. Uh, racist comments are made all the time, apparently. I mean, everybody's offended by the slightest word and they'll call it a racist word and they'll say it's racism. And immediately everybody goes on the war path. Uh, those OK, so. Even... All right. Let's stop right there. Stop right there. So, Keith, what would you like to say real quickly? What would you like to add real quickly? What would I like to add about anything? Yes. Well, I... OK, well, I would just say that. Um, you know, I'm going to, in the future, I've made a decision. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring to the table, whenever you ask me a question, and uh, and if those guys are talking over me, I'm just going to be quiet until they're all done. And then uh, when I do get a chance to speak, I'm going to recite, I'm going to read, actually read from the evidence that I show, you know, showing the, uh, uh, you know, my source. Because Aguna... And Todd and Nas are very good, very articulate at speaking about sort of things that they have no Your source. Source of the dark web. They never give any source. They all they say is start mouthing off about what they believe or what, whatever okay, they. Okay, thank you. All right, so, you can't go. You can't go any further. You were I'm able to say what us. you wanted to say. I got to move on. Um, <laughs> Stephen, I've got the article up. If Mute you can look Max at it right now. Space. Alabama Senator Tuberville equates descendants of enslaved people to criminals. Do you think his I former... I don't know the, the context of what he's talking about. I haven't seen the article. I really don't know. Um, it equates right. this descendants of enslaved people to criminals. Maybe... I have no idea. Maybe somebody's okay. trying to make something of something that's not there. Or maybe some. All right. So, Stephen. Really okay, Stephen. Just make a comment oh, yeah. really quickly on whatever you want to make a comment about. Um. Hopefully, one day we can all get together and we'll all work together for the the betterment of this country, and we won't be at each other's throats over stupid crap that they put in front of us on one side or the other, and the the people need to get together in every country because your government doesn't give one damn about you. I don't care what government it is. They do not care about you as a people. So the not people from Donald every country Trump, need to get together and, and rise up and take control of the government the way the, the founding fathers of the United States wanted it to be. They wanted a very limited government. Right now we have a government that's way out of control, that's weaponized against its people that have opposite views of them. The FBI, the Department of Justice, the uh, Democrat Party, the, uh, the uh, everything is against people that are against them. And that's wrong. That's what we have right now. We have a fascist, fascistic uh, country right now. You're going to let him go on and on. It's from the Democrat Party is from Joe Biden's party. And the people all need to stand up because even the people on the side of Joe Biden, like the ding dongs on this show, are just useful idiots. And you will be slaves as well. Thank as you. Well. Thank you. Nas. And take your time, use Nas. That, use, use a new term. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, as far as as far as Tuberville, uh, remember he made over thirty million dollars as a college football coach. So that's how he made his money, his reputation, and everything else. He runs as a senator in Alabama. Uh, unlearned person that he is, never held a political office. He beat out Doug Jones, former prosecutor of the Ku Klux Klan, which kind of tells you where we are right now in this country. As Tuberville can actually win a Senate seat. So his comments the other day weren't surprising, but ultimately the problem becomes when we get these people who make these racist comments like this, the question becomes okay, 
we can criticize that person, but why does he have an audience for it? And that gives you an idea about the state of America right now. So Tuberville never ran political office, becomes a senator based on his background as a football coach. How ironic when we have somebody running for a Senate seat who used to be a football player who has never held political office. So at this point, Republicans, uh, Y'all got to ask better for yourselves, man. Ultimately, the party despises you, sees you as useful idiots, which is why they don't give you candidates worthy of your uh, ballot. And also, it's why they don't discuss policy with you. They just use culture war issue after culture war issue. You've had a war against Dr. Seuss, transgenders, and everything else, but nothing about <laughs> how a government is ran, how you want your state to run, uh, what you want the future to look like. We don't hear anything about that, which is why somebody like Brett Favre could steal millions of dollars from a red state like Mississippi with the help of Republican uh, polit politicians who were actively uh, texting him back and forth about how they were going to steal the money. And ultimately, these people who are so outraged about Dr. Seuss and whatever else Tucker Carlson tells them to be mad at, but they're not upset about that. So Thank you. Stephen and Keith are prime examples of this. And mm -hmm. you can kind of see the dysfunction and I, I would say lack of education and, and inability to critically think, uh, which is showing on the right, which is now a fascist movement. And we've seen two Thank you, fascist uh, people run in the Republican Party. I'll All stop right. there. Thank but, you. Uh, um, Aguna. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, in, in you don't even know fascism is, but this is who they are. Again, I, we, we didn't say anything during out their speech, but here you go. So this is who they are. At one point, I thought that you know maybe a Keith or a Stephen may have been brainwashed or they may have been fooled, but this is who they are, right? And so when you have people who have no empathy for the other side, they sit there and blame the left and they project their views on the left, but they never want to engage the left or even talk about. You know, he says we want to get together, but when you have an opposite viewpoint, it's him that's attacking. It's him that's using the same grievance politics. And that's why, as a Republican, you can't sit here and defend egregious stuff. I mean, are we, we've gotten to the point where you can't discuss policy. It's all a party of grievance. you got to scare people. You gotta, if you're an immigrant, if you're, you know, you, if you're calling people socialists, you're doing all the same things, ironically, that you heard back during the civil rights era to explain you know, the people who don't look like you, who don't speak like you, who may not have the same culture as you, skin color as you, there you're hearing all of that from the right trying to demonize people on the left. You never hear anybody saying right, left on here. Can until you talk about Senator Tuberville? So Senator Tuberville, how about this? He said equate the descendants of slaves to criminals, right? How about ask the descendants of slaves how they feel about that? Okay. Instead of sitting there and telling people what they should feel, ask the people who are actually who he's talking about how they feel about that statement. And guess what? As a descendant of a slave, I see Tuberville, some Yahoo idiot who shouldn't even be running for, again, if you need a football coach and you don't have someone who, again, so for some reason, because Donald Trump ran on the gimmick of being president because he was uh, he was basically an actor, he had a reality TV show. Now you're getting these gimmicky type candidates in the Republican Party who don't really understand policy, who don't really understand how to be a senator for the entire state, not for the people that just voted for you. And you have these people catering to their base and not really saying okay. what they're going to do for the thank state you. of Alabama. And they can but do that. You know, I want to thank, you know, I would like to talk to one of his former players, a lot of his former players, and ask them, how do they feel? Was, was he like that when they were coaching him? You know, how do they feel? Well, them, as long as they that. run the ball, as long as they run the ball, that's that's, that's all he, he's using from what they needed to do. Okay, cousin Todd. Former, former Arizona Cardinals linebacker Carlos Dansby has responded and talked about how uh, he didn't expect this. He's really disappointed and sees him as less than a man and is ashamed to have played for uh, one Tommy Tuberville. So Carlos Dansby has responded. I haven't seen many other responses. Okay, thank you, cousin Todd. Uh, to go back to um, Herschel Walker, um, his own son said he never took care of him. He never cared about him. Sending him texts, I love you, means nothing. So, uh, mind you, that son is a flake. Uh, anybody who can consider themselves a Republican with this Republican Party, these are all Trumpists. 
These are all Trump Republicans. So that's why I'm shocked at Stacey and Aguna for considering themselves to be Republicans. But uh, and then the the senator from uh, Alabama, he's just a typical backwards country hick that doesn't like black people and wants the world to know it. And they used to be a little more subtle about it, but he's just outright with it, talking about reparations. For, oh, he's just, he's the worst. And um, he should lose uh, re-election. And um, I also wanted to talk about Florida, Marco Rubio. He's such a coward. He didn't even vote for a flood relief for Florida. He didn't even vote. And it's his own state. He's such a coward with small hands, according to Donald Trump. <laughs> but um, uh, so I'm hoping Val uh, wins that, that election. And uh, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, she's another quack that's talking about replacement theory. Replace it. They're coming to replace you. Well, who did you replace? They always think America belongs to them, but it doesn't. If you are white living in America, you are a foreigner in somebody else's land. I'll stop there because we're running over. Okay, thank you. Um, Keith, one more thing. You're out there in Los Angeles. Do you want to tell us what happened with the Los Angeles Council member who made the racist comment? I almost uh, didn't include that, Keith. Uh, well, well, I'm just hoping that they don't they don't start a riot out here. But uh, yeah, they're pretty upset. Like I said, those on the left, when they find out uh, the true racists, one day maybe the the black people will wake up and see the real racists of the Democrat Party. And they are the ones that should be paying reparations, if anybody. Uh, but, you know, they're finally waking up. Right, a little heaven, what, happened, what, did the Los what did the Los Angeles County Council member say? Well, I don't have the exact word. But, the word, but she said that uh, there was a boy uh, who was at a Martin Luther King parade. Uh, he's adopted by a white, a white couple, racist, adopted a young black boy is uh, has been adopted and uh you know by a white couple and so she's making the statement that he was uh, acting like a little monkey uh, and so people are pretty upset about it i guess you know one of those things <laughs> so that's no, that's only race to see race ever ten years in la they do redistricting and she made it kind of clear that her group is going for self. She talked about one other council member said he's with the blacks. And yeah. she was talking about the Van Nuys airport and some other areas that she wanted to make sure stayed under her power in her district. And she wanted to keep certain groups out. That would be blacks and whites and other people yeah. who are not Latino. And Nas and Nas, she's a Republican, right? Because only Republicans can be yeah. racist. She's a Democrat. I'll correct you. All right. Just wanted to make All right, thank you. Wow. Um, I didn't want to include that. that. Um, it's back in the milk. What is so big about that? So, only there, racist there was also race, a racist, only racist race. who um, uh, tried to get the bird watcher it, uh, arrested. She was a Democrat. So what? What does that matter? <laughs> there you go. You want good. this anecdotal nonsense uh, to let me just, what? Yeah, let me say this. Uh, <laughs> there there out, are... There are Democrats who are racist, but Surprise. the Republican Party is home for racists. Not every Republican not, are, not every Republican is a racist, but the every House racist the way, is a Republican. Who, who the Capitol with a Did you hear me? The Democratic Party said, is, has, is wait, the party of racism. Listen since... to me carefully. I said, not every Republican is a racist. But every racist is a Republican. Am I a racist? 
Am I a racist too, you guys? Yes, you are. You're not even yeah. considering. Well, I don't know if they that's not. I don't know where you're getting that information from. I don't know if that's necessarily true because I think you're probably omitting people who are Democrat who are racist. Um, I just but, said some Democrats are racist, but I said there is a home for racist people in the Republican Party. Not okay. all Republicans are racist, but okay. all racists are Republican. Okay. All right. You got to go. Look, man, look, man. We're Keep out of time. We're out of time. We're black way over time. We've never been this far over time. This argument to give them some type of bravado or something. Yes. We've never been to our first responders like you, in our them, community. Just another... Thank you. You make our lives livable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. White folk to have our men and told. women <laughs> of the U.S. military for all that you do and we sacrificing your up. lives so that we are free to say whatever we choose on the show. Is, we what, are what forever. Is, what is Stephen doing? We can't read that, Stephen. Aguna. Aguna. Your, Aguna. Your I'm doing the out. Aguna. Can I do the outtake? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go okay. ahead. <laughs> the Democrat <laughs> Party is the thing? party of racism. On the half of, of Jim Crow. Relax, Stephen. Go ahead, To Stephen. our U U.S. military for all that you do in sacrificing your lives you so that we are free to say whatever we want on the show. We are forever indebted. Um, happy... Hat Hispanic Heritage Month that goes from September 15th to October 15th. Happy National Coming Out Day, which is today, October 11th. On behalf of Aguna, let me make sure I, I do this right. The Nigerian moderate Republican. <laughs> Stephen, the independent not, thinker. Crazy. <laughs> Keith. Keith, the constitutional conservative. Job. Hey, you put dye in your hair, Keith? You put some dye in there. <laughs> and my <laughs> cousin Todd. With the perm and all, yeah. And Nas. Nas. Nas, you know, I must say today, we really appreciate you today, Nas. We needed you today, Nas. Because, Nas, you put a lot of meat into a lot of areas that Todd and Aguna were unable to do. It's Thank so you guys. We needed you. We needed you. Yeah, he put, he put a lot of. He already sent you the cash app next week. He, he put more tofu. Food. He put tofu. He didn't put no meat. He put tofu. Well, he put in with the sports because his teams are losing like crazy. Atlanta's losing to Philly like crazy. I know. Well, I'm, I'm waiting for the I'm the one that already said. To leave the Republican Party, Aguna must leave. He must go to a Democrat party. I don't believe so, in labels. Okay, this I know labels are going to drive your ideology, but stop, okay, stop I'm labeling sorry. things. Please put yourself. Let's please. keep this. Let's keep oh, this conversation. I'm sorry. Going keep this conversation on. going on on Twitter. Um, you can see us on Stephanie Stallworth's The Flow Network. Uh, you can check us out on check out our new Instagram page. You can see us on Twitter, Twitch. Or uh, what's that other thing? Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. Yeah, that's Point it. Star. Are you, oh. are you, uh, Stacey, are you going to plug um, Keith's Just for Men sponsorship? <laughs> hey, I didn't get a dime <laughs> from you it. Did you? Funny, <laughs> you, did you get any money man. from it? Or, or <laughs> Brillo Cat on us. <laughs> if I didn't get a dime. If I didn't get a dime. If I didn't get any money, guess what? You didn't get any money. I didn't get any money. You didn't get it any all, money. Did you wash it in, Keith? It, it, it all goes Aguna back to you. Is jealous you Thank you. We'll yeah, see you I'm next so week. We are live. First off, you can that. watch us on YouTube 24-7, any of our previous episodes. We're live every Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Be there. Be square. Aguna, join the Democrat Party. One of their waiting for you. Hey, stay, out, night. stay out the Capitol. Stay out the Capitol, Steve. They're waiting for you, Aguna. Yeah. The Democrat sure. Party. They're waiting for you. Yeah. They're waiting for you in white man's heaven, too. <laughs> <laughs> All the ambrosia yeah. you need. Oh, it's the best I, heaven. The white man's You're heaven. You're going to get there. Get the white, white man's man heaven. Let's go. Heaven. Come on, yeah. Uncle Ruckus. Get up there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
her and going to black it there. Hey, they may make you serve some biscuits when you get in there. Uh oh, don't you dare. Don't you dare. You may have to serve. You may have to serve when you get there, but you're going to get in there. Devin, Better we don't speak color. In black man heaven, not, they only see color. They, that's, why, that's why nobody's in black man's heaven. They love, they love man. Color. Thank you, Nas. No, Steven, really, Nas. you say the joke, you. is not funny. Thank you, Nas. When you say the joke, Steven, it's you're not so funny. We appreciate that. And you know what I appreciate, Nas? Nas had that oh, comment from Tommy Tuberville's former, um, former player. I really appreciated that. Yeah, he plugged I, it in. Thank you, Nas. Well, he's gone. See you there. Good night. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord.